Welcome to Battletech in the Morning with Captain Nips. I'm Captain Nips. It is Monday morning. This is the Battletech Backer Beta. It is a new week. Ladies and gentlemen, we've made it through the weekend, sadly, and is back into the old grind. Fortunately for me and you watching, the grind involves giant robots punching and shooting and grinding into each other for the glory of battle. So to start off this week, to kind of give myself a little shake up from last week's rigmarole, I've decided that I want to kind of bounce around a little bit, try out some things, see some stuff, and to start out, I'd like to shed the spotlight on a variant that is... Welcome, Commander. I'll say I hope it shows up in the campaign game, because... While we are getting some dual PPC mechs down the line, we've been told that the Warhammer should be in the game. There are other variants that are worth your consideration. And so today, on Battletech in the Morning, let's talk about the Catapult K2. Now, the, I've actually played with the Catapult K2 in some previous videos, but I've not actually thrown a spotlight on it because of reasons. But basically, the gist of it is, you've got your C1, which is the default catapult that shows up in the game. It's got its LRM-15s, it's got a bevy of medium lasers, it's got some single heat sinks, it's got some jump jets. It's got decent durability, good range, good firepower, all around good package. What the K2 does is it strips out the missiles and a good chunk of the lasers, replaces the missiles with PPCs and brings in a couple of machine guns for backup. Now the reason that the K2 exists is because this is a Draconis Combine variant. Our friends at the Draconis Combine apparently are just swimming in PPCs so they decided eh, missiles are so gauche. We would rather fire ionized lightning at things because we've got all these PPCs. Tail of the tape wise, K2 against the C1. That's the big difference is the PPCs. You shave about 300,000 C bills from the cost, which is good. So hopefully it comes up cheap. It's got an extra ton of armor. A, so not a super huge amount, but it's nice. Uh, two medium lasers and two machine guns with the machine gun ammo stashed in the center torso. The other important point about the K2 over some of the other catapult variants is that it does not mount jump jets. The C1 has jump jets, K2 does not. So it's a little less mobile for a mech at size. Decent speed, it's no faster or slower than the C1, but that lack of jump jets could, could, could be a thing to deal with down the road. So today, I'm pitting a quartet of K2s against a quartet of C1s. Now, I'm changing up the pilot situation just a little bit because I want to keep my crack pilots, so Wildfire, Kraken, and Apex across the board, both teams. But today, I've decided that I want to, I want to add a little wrinkle, hoping that the AI picks up its game a little bit if I give it a little help here. And I'm putting Mockingbird in the fourth slot. And the reason for that is because of her very high tactics number and her sensor lock. Although Kraken brings sensor lock as well. But I'm expecting that the AI should play better if it's got a slightly more well-rounded lance of pilots. And I'm just going to have to eat the fact that Mockingbird couldn't hit the side of a dropship from 50 meters away. So, what are you going to do? The other thing in this matchup, if the AI actually does measure up and start to play up to its potential, this could go real bad for me because LRMs with a dedicated spotter versus nothing but indirect or nothing but direct fire in my lance. Uh, could get me missiled pretty bad before I get to the engagement. But, you know, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. 
For today's matchup, we're going to take it out to... I want to go somewhere where heat matters, but not too much. I guess, I guess we stay on river crossing. The other important thing to note is that the C1 has 10 heat sinks by default. The K2, because of the twin PPCs, made room for an extra 10 heat sinks. So it's got 20 heat sinks, so it should be about on par heat wise with what the C1 is putting out. Rainy day at River Crossing. Let's get this started. So, got our K2s. Look at those beautiful beasts. I think I may have said it in a previous video, but... Damn, those are some good-looking mechs. You even have the PPC mounts properly, properly visualized here, even though the game technically probably shouldn't be supporting that. But hey, you know what? Gift horses and mouths not looking in them. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm... I'm... I'm a smidgen curious about some things. So I'm going to start by putting one of these catapults right up on this ridge. And I'm going to move... I'm going to take a little bit of a spread stance here. Mockingbird being my tactics pilot, my sensor jockey. I'm there. See if we can get some spots here. We got company. I'm here. All right. So, since wildfire is up on a uh, up on a mountain. I'm actually not going to move her first. Yes, Commander. We're going to get Mockingbird in here. Because the thing that one discovers... Oof. That is some slow moving. Alright, well... Front of the, front of the forest here. Oh, boo. I was hoping to catch that guy with a sensor lock. Alright, well... Next turn. Kraken actually might be able to get the lock on for us. Since I'll move him down here. Well, party's all here, more or less. Let's uh let's light some people up, shall we? Sensor locks, not just for indirect fire also good for providing very long sight lines as demonstrated on Friday let's light this guy up Engaging target. Ah, I love that PPCs so pretty apex up next by. apex because of her wonderful breaching shot that we learned last week, way. we will likely find success with only a single PPC against this guy. Let's keep our heat low. Boom. Come 
Commander. Standing by. Now that we've got a few, got a, got a few more targets to deal with. Uh, let's see. Is there a place that is safe? No, there's no. Of course, there's not. So, Mockingbird doesn't really have too much of a strong reason to move up. I'd like to focus on the single target I was starting to work on, but I've put so little damage on it at this point. If this guy presents a better target, and the answer is not really. I'm a little surprised that the enemy AI hasn't begun to engage. Stand in by. I'm also surprised this guy, I don't have line of sight on that guy from anybody. Weird. Oh well. Let's light her up. In four. Going for the jump. And here comes the barrages. So, just on paper. Pair of LRMs, pair of LRM 15s, that's 60 damage each with each launcher versus the K2's PPC's 50 damage each with each cannon is not the greatest. I mean, we're giving up some damage, but what we give up, we also gain back in heat, which also isn't great. But, but. We also get this tricky little, uh, wait, what? How do you not have a line of sight on this guy? Game, what are you doing? What are you doing, game? Ugh, weak. We get this tricky little two hit penalty that we can apply with our PPCs. Anything that we hit is gonna take a minus one to hit with its weapons firing back, which, mm, wow, that's a lot of missiles. Isn't a lot. I don't know that I would give up 10 damage for a minus one to hit from the targeted unit Standing by. in too many scenarios, but it might make a difference. We'll see. I need to, I need to pick a target and stick with it. So I'm going to light this guy up. I could bring the medium lasers in to play, but I think I want to back off of it just at the moment. We're not quite there yet. We'll go. Oh, that's not great. Is this guy gonna fling hot fire? Yep, here we go. Time for that uh, from downtown missile barrage that we're all so in love with. Ooh, look at that left leg work. Ah, that's not good. Kraken's getting worked. Yes, Commander. Speaking of getting worked, how is... What? What? What is going on with this mech? Ready for how about Kraken? He doesn't have a line of sight. Alright, something is goofed up. Something is very goofed up with this guy here because he's half buried in a rock oh man that's annoying all right so repositioning is what we're gonna do here crack and stability that's the other thing that uh the k2 gives up over the missile variants of the catapult the stability damage that missiles bring to the table. PPCs don't really do a whole lot of stability damage. I think given that Kraken's probably about to face plant, I'm gonna fire the mediums. Attacking from position. Let's get these hits in while I can before he goes face down.
cannot believe she doesn't have a line of sight to anything. Weirdly. But if I take one step to the right, I can drop the hammer on this guy. I'm going to continue to fire with just the two PPCs, try and keep my heat under control here. And then the game, you know, goes and calls me a liar, because apparently you can just cause knockdowns with PPCs. And certainly PPCs do 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 stability damage, but I think that the amount is quite a bit less than an LRM-15. So, given that we have a downed mech, I should probably take advantage of that. So let's move Mockingbird up just a smidgen. Because while she can't she, she can't hit anything that's on its feet, boy howdy, boy howdy! If it's laying down, if it's laying down, wow! Look at that. Let, let's back up. Let's just check check that again. Hmm. She's got amazing percentages to hit the targeted segment. I think I'm actually going to aim for this left arm. If I can blow off a missile launcher, that will help keep my guys alive a little bit longer. Yeah, that works. And then we get some damage transfer in on that side torso. And she is going to pay for it because I exposed her on top of that hill to make it happen. Again with the left legs. A lot of left side damage coming from over here. Commander. All right, Apex. We've got targets. Let's keep working these. Uh, let's work this side. Roger that. There we go. Take away laser. Take away a ton of ammo. And more importantly, open up that entire side to damage transfer to the center torso. I'm taking internal damage. You're fine. All right, let's fine get <laughs> let's get Mockingbird off of this hill cuz this seems like a bad idea. Location Having to take confirmed. the long way around. Let's just check out what her two to hit numbers are going to be here. Well, 75 isn't terrible. We also get the bonus. It's worth noting that the PPCs being in the arms get the arm mounted bonus to hit, which is nice. And we're probably going to see a lot of that in mechs in this game because the dual PPCs in the arm setup is super popular in a lot of mech designs. Whew. Apex getting, getting worked. Getting worked by missiles here. Alright, so everybody's in a pretty protected position at this point, so I'm not super worried. Ex yes, Commander. Wildfire up on top's got bulwark, so I don't need to worry about her being in cover. Everybody else is in literal cover. So let's just uh, continue to pour fire on the bad guys. Oh, beautiful. Hitting that left side again. Transferring to center torso. Got this catapult down to 10 structure in the CT. Meanwhile, Kraken, again, flirting, flirting with knockdowns. So I should probably take a moment to move him. Not a lot of, not a lot of good lines of sight for uh, only being a few hundred meters away from each other across this gorge. Check the heat. No need to bring the lasers into play here quite yet. Nice, double up on the right arm of this catapult here. Left side continues to get sandpapered. Awaiting orders. All right, let's find us a target here. Want 
to make sure that I keep my distance for the PPCs because of that minimum range. On the move. Let's light this guy up. He did not decide to guard. Said decided to fire with his remaining LRM. Rack, so boom. Kapow. Second shot gets home. Catapult goes down. Doing a good job here. Alright, so we've got the focus. We've got the jump. Oh, there we go. Here comes the hurt. Kraken's gonna take a take a bit here. Might manage to get out of it with his leg intact. I'm definitely going to have to rotate the line now. So, let's take care of that, shall we? Kraken. Can't run. His heat's pretty high, and his stability damage is pretty high. So, I think what I'll do, I'm going to back him up. Got enough movement to kind of just position myself how I feel. I'm going to turn my right side out and then guard. Now it does invite potential rear shot from this target here, but I'm hoping that there are better, closer, juicier targets for this one to fire at. Commander? So let's try and make that happen. Uh, let's see. Where do I have to be to get this guy to light, him, light Mockingbird up? There we go. Right there. Oh, right here. In the cover. Take the coverage spot. Get just to the right side of this rock with our line of sight. And I was working this guy earlier, so I will continue to do so now. Affirmative. Look at that. Mockingbird. Showing competence in the face of having to use real guns. I'm here. Meanwhile, Wildfire gives no Fs. He's just going to stand on this hill and rain shots on these enemy targets. Yes, Commander. I have an obstructed line from there. Let's see if I can fix that by getting a little bit closer. And get a good firing arc orientation the shot. It is bulwarked, so we're going to Target confirmed. deal with that little problem. Unsteady shot. This catapult's getting worked in the center. A lot of damage to its midsection because it decides to take some water and cool. Alright, so at this point we have an interesting opportunity. Uh, Mockingbird is starting to run a little hot. So I'm going to move her in, and I'm actually going to go for the short-range stuff and bleed some heat in the process. Taking the shot. Get some little Daka Daka in there. And then next turn I'll check her heat again. If her heat is still kind of sitting a little higher than I'd like, I will move her in for melee attacks. Meanwhile, Apex is getting lit up. Woof. That hit something important. <laughs> yeah. Target locked. There we go. Keep working this one. Closest to the team. Here comes some hurt. Oof. 21 left in the leg. Not a lot to give, but not the worst. Check the paper doll on this guy. He's got 20 armor in the CT, 6 on, one, six on the left, 20 on the right. Can actually punch through the left armor at this point with PPCs. So, here's an, here's an interesting little... I think number situation. If this, this is this. If wildfire had breaching shot, I think I actually would pass on it right now. And the reason for that is, 
with two PPC shots at 25 damage each because of guarded. If a PPC hits the CT or the left torso, it's going to go internal even at 25 damage, which could cause a crit. So I want to fire two PPCs on the off chance I can cause two crits. Oh, heat's a pain though. Uh, you know what? Wildfire is in really good shape. She can handle a little bit of overheat damage, so let's just Roger. make that happen. Alright, well... Only opened up the one panel, but it's not a bad place to be. Kraken, who now has plenty of heat scale to work with. Kind of want to get him, get him in a good spot here. That's not a great spot. This is one of those rare occasions where I kind of wish the K2 had some jump jets to reposition, because this is kind of an awkward facing for him. So I'm just going to face straight up on this target. A little bit to the right on this target. Let's light this guy up over here. Continue the focused fire, because... There we go. Open up the arm. Cause an unsteady situation. Oh no, it's running away. Uh, yep, that's a leg. You're fine. I'm receiving you. All right, so wildfire has a heat situation that I need to take care of, and the only way to take care of that is to get off this hill. The only way to get off this hill is to run back down the hill, unfortunately. But that'll take her away for a turn. She'll bleed some of that heat, a good chunk of that heat, in fact. Meanwhile, uh, Mockingbird's going to get worked here. Wow, worked indeed. Can't take many more of those. Commander. Oh, uh, let's see. So, we got heat scale. Plenty of it. Ooh, here we go. These numbers stink. The two hit numbers stink on this target because of it's movement modifier, but we're going to fix that because focus is delicious, nutritious, and very good at helping us murder things. So, let's just light this guy up. Solid hits. Not many panels left with armor on this target. As these uh, C1s kind of taking a beating from my PPCs. Although I'm definitely feeling, I'm feeling the lack of weaponry that the C1s have. The the combination of the missiles and four medium lasers is such a such a powerful alpha strike. That is such a high damage alpha strike. Like, even if they ignoring heat issues for a moment, I kind of wish the K2 had a little bit more, a little bit more sauce to work with here. Ugh. All right, Apex, what do you got going on? You've got 19 in the right torso, 25 in the left, 38 in the arm. So I need, I think I need to reposition just a smidgen. I'm going to keep firing at the guy on the river, so let's bend this arc as much as we can. Move order confirmed. Eh. I probably should have fired both PPCs there. I did not check my target before clicking the fire button. Do we call that a misclick? I mean, it did down the target. Yes, it's it down targets. Let's fix this little issue here. Back in action. Get her pointed the right direction. Hey, look! A target! Ooh, juicy one, too. 81 structure left in the CT. 58% chance to hit. All the heat scale in the world to work with, because, well, mm, mm, mm. Let me rephrase that. We're using all the heat scale to work this shot. PPCs and medium lasers should... Oh, well, 
Okay. <laughs> Hit with the medium lasers and whip with the big guns. All right. Let's check the paper doll here. Yep, 31 left. I'm here. Let's get Wildfire down on this action. Now that she's got some heat scale to work with. Shouldn't take too many shots. In fact, should only take one PPC shot. I'm going to actually risk it and save the heat. There we go. The nice thing about the K2s and their their build is that if you're only firing the one PPC, it has 20 single heat sinks. That's plenty of heat sinks to actually bleed heat while still applying some pressure with your guns. Uh, as Apex eats all of the missile fire ever and goes down. But that was a desperation shot out of the AI, so we should take advantage of that. Going back. Eh, I should have faced. Changed my facing. I shouldn't have faced up field quite so much. Line this up. Uh, let's just check the 71 structure. He can take an overheat shot. It's not ideal. What an odd set of numbers here. Okay, so, so that's interesting. I hadn't noticed this previously. I must be in the battle mech target. The target's right arc because. The two hit, the called shot to hit on the right side components is all very high percentage and the left side is basically zero. So that's interesting. And of course the head is not hardly any number to bother with. So I'm going to focus on the torso. I'm going to take this heat all the way to 11. Drill this guy's side torso. 13 structure left. I'm generating a lot of heat. I'm here. So if Mockingbird can maybe land a lucky shot here. Hmm. Not really a good way to face her. Since she's down the she's actually missing her left leg. It's so so badly damaged as to be useless. Uh Wow, yeah. Let's uh let's light this guy up. Let's see if we can avoid shutting down in the process. I only need to do 13 damage to that right torso to pop it off. So a PPC and a medium laser keeps us heat slightly heat negative. There you go. Look at that. Good shooting out of Mockingbird. We're going to take that. Pop the side off of that catapult. Now it's Wildfire's turn to get in on this action. Although at this point, with the mech having powered up, it is now guarded. But she's got heat to work with, so let's Roger. take advantage of it. Oof, the swift shots, back to back, pew pew. Wasting no time getting those salvos off. Kraken taking some damage. Kraken taking a lot of damage. Kraken taking all the damage. Alright, so... We can work a heat situation here. Get some other guns involved. We've got machine guns. Machine guns are heat free. We like that. Also very good numbers to hit. Also we've got the fact that we've got some good damage transfer going on here from the side. As we chew into the center torso. Alright. Still looking pretty good. Yes, Commander. Mockingbird. Since you still have PPCs and you have a river nearby, but your legs are kind of garbage. What do we do? I'm going to use the river. It's going to get her killed, but it's going to put us one step closer to winning this fight. That guy's guarded. This guy's not. Oop. We can fire. Actually get sneak a medium laser into this salvo because of the river. 
doing an admirable job landing her shots today. Mockingbird pulling her weight. Wow, I'm honestly surprised nothing broke from that salvo. That was gross. All right. Yes, Commander. So, uh, oh, if she had both legs, she could move up and ninja kick this guy in the face. Instead, I'm just going to have to settle for the called shot. line this up. Let's turn off medium laser and let's not let's not mess around here. Let's just go center of mass and start working this guy. Chew him out from the inside out. Engaging target. Reporting critical hit. Oh, got some salt going on up here. Damage. Well, two can play at that I'm game, sir point. or madam. With a 60 damage, 95% chance to hit melee attack. But oh look, we have machine guns. 78 damage to the CT kills it. Roger. Shot to the noggin. Daka, 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 daka. Don't really see the DACA since the model game model isn't really set up for it. But I like to pretend. Alright, so we've got one down shutdown target. Center mass, who's whose center torso is pretty toasty. We've got this guy over here fighting Kraken. I think I actually uh, This is gonna be left side on the target over here, which is not going to hit the center torso, I don't think. It's it, it, it. There's a chance it hits the center torso, but it's not likely. So I'm going to take a shot at that guy. I'm trying to preserve Kraken by providing some cross crossing fire here. Hey, knockdown. You know what? Just as good as just as good as a kill at this point. This guy's gonna power up. But that's all that mech is doing. I'm here. Mockingbird actually has an opportunity here to drop a real hard hammer on this guy, so I'm gonna back her up. She's got water to work with. She's got focus on, to work people. with. Let's make it happen. Yeah, overheat, but you know what? <laughs> Actually, um, she stands a good chance of just evaporating her arms off if I overheat. So I'm gonna I'm gonna slow my roll a little bit. Copy that. Uh, doesn't get the kill though. Kraken, on the other hand, he's got he's got options here. So tar down target has 54 structure. Let's just maybe back up a smidge, just a smidge. I'm not a huge fan of those PPC numbers, but I, if I want to use if I want to use the machine guns, I have to stay close enough. So I'm going to take these really bad PPC numbers point all these guns at the center torso, and I'm going to pull the trigger, and because he is a crack shot, two low percentage PPC shots later, and that is a dead catapult. Speaking of dead catapults, dead man walking. I'm just going to overheat, because Wildfire's taken literally no damage this game, and there you go. Pop goes the catapult as the K2s pull out the win. Pretty... <sighs> had to run a little hot there, but things turned out all right for Team Catapult K2. So, 12 rounds, 33 minutes and 55 seconds. 
for a match that was pretty move up and just everybody fires their guns until someone falls over. I uh, lost Apex due to massive missile explosions, and I nearly lost Mockingbird. Surprisingly, she gets through to the end. Six structure left on the left side and 15 on the right. Very nearly a walking stick. A barely walking stick since she's down a leg. Enemy forces kind of do it the hard way. Kind of core out through one side or another and work the juicy, juicy center. So those are your Catapult K2s. What to take away from this outing? I think the important things you need to remember if you decide to find... If... If... If the K2 is introduced as a variant in the campaign game. Let's assume for the moment that you are able to get it at the C build discount versus the C1 that Tabletop would tell us. Again, it's about 300k C bills cheaper. Um, what are you giving up? You're giving up a higher alpha for one thing. And it's probably, that's probably the biggest noteworthy item is that Going from the 60 damage LRMs to the 50 damage PPCs is, and losing two medium lasers in the process is very noticeable. You're definitely losing, so that's 25, 50, 60, so you're losing 70 points of alpha strike by switching to a K2. You're also giving up the jump jets, which I kind of wished I'd had a couple of times in that match. Like, just just for repositioning's sake. Not for silly things like DFAs, but, like, just to just to put my mechs into slightly better positions when there was an odd, awkward turn. The bonuses. So, 50-point slugs from PPCs. It's kind of unfair to call it a slug. It's an ionized lightning bolt or some other magic science shenanigans but it's a single 50 point strike versus the 4x15 of an LRM15 so the damage is a little bit more focused which is good you don't sandpaper quite as much um, when you're hitting the components the, the panels that you actually would like to hit and the heat situation isn't actually all that hard to keep in track you know keep in check the 20 single heat sinks on the K2 is well enough, easily enough to kind of keep it under control. I was able to get four or five rounds worth of, you know, dual PPC fire off before I had to really start backing off of it a bit. Just as durable, so it's not... Even the extra ton of armor, I don't think you really noticed the extra ton of armor on the K2, um, which is fine. A little bit extra durability, I, I'm not gonna... Not gonna Say I don't, you know, I don't appreciate, I certainly appreciate that extra armor. So all around, it's a nice package, and I think that if we do get the K2 in the campaign, and you're able to get it at the discount, maybe even on par, like, depending on, I don't know what, like, the market forces of the, the game's, like, gray market are going to be, you know, will there be penalties for purchasing from certain factions versus others based on your own standing with them, blah, 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 etc., etc. But I think it's a worthy chassis for your consideration. Maybe down the road, you know, pick up a, pick up a K2, see how it feels. Give it a, give it a test ride. Cause you know, worst comes to worst. You can just kind of PPC things to death. And that's never been a bad option in the history of Battletech as far as I'm concerned. Although, to be fair, kind of a PPC homer. Warhammer was my first ride. Love me some lightning. But that'll be all for today's Battletech in the Morning. I am, as always, your librarian of the mech TROs, Captain Nips. Searching the uh, cannon far and wide for chassis that we could possibly play with. Oh, one other thing. It's probably worth mentioning, actually before I roll out. So if you kind of like the setup of a K2 and we don't end up with the K2 variant itself, you can kind of fit the K2's loadout into the C1. The C1, assuming the hardpoint model, uh, has energy hardpoints in the torsos. They're not in the arms. So you're not going to get the arm to hit bonus. But you can fit 
some torso inline PPCs. You know, you drop some medium lasers in the process, and then you can kind of juggle everything else around to make things work. So you can kind of get a K2 alike, even if we don't necessarily get the K2 proper. With that, though, that'll be all for today, and I am headed out to the next great thing. I hope all of you have a wonderful morning, a wonderful afternoon, evening or night, wherever you are. That'll be all, and I will see all of you in the next video.